Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks very much for joining with us today. My name is Jack Nolan. I'm a senior inspector in the Organics and Market Support Division in the Department of Agriculture here in Johnstown Castle. Uh, Minister Hackett announced a call for projects for short supply chain uh, to meet programme for government targets. And that's what I'm going to discuss with you or outline over 10 or 11 slides. If you'd like to ask questions, please type them in to the question box that you can see on your screen. And what we'll do is deal with all the questions afterwards. If there's anything we can't answer today, we'll still take the question and we'll email you tomorrow or the next day with the answer. A recording of this will also be available online on the Organics website. So the purpose, sorry. So the background to the scheme is that commitments were made under Programme for Government to develop premium markets closer to home. And really the idea is about bringing more power back to small producers and to farmers to make sure that they can make as much profit from farming as possible or for producing vegetables or fruit and so on. We want to promote short, efficient routes to market to um, connect small food producers with the consumer because it is an issue today that many times people don't know where they, their food comes from or don't appreciate it. And in other cases, they want to support local producers and there isn't an opportunity for them. We also want to give an opportunity to local authorities um, to develop and further expand farmers markets, farm shops, food emporiums and so on. We want to work with local authorities to develop community gardens, allotments and support the small food producer trying to diversify on farm, whether that's through a processing facility or bringing food to the local market. Uh, short supply chains has also included as one of the key priorities in the recently launched National Organic Strategy. So this was launched by Minister Hackett and Minister McConlogue at the ploughing match recently in Ratanuska. It runs from 2024 to 2030. And one of the targets of that is to increase the wholesale retail value of organic produce from about 200 million euro today to 750 million by 2030. And a really important part of that strategy is coordinating the value chain. This is specifically for organics. And that would mean strengthening the connections between farmers and processors to streamline operations, expanding and increasing the processing networks, and of course, shortening the supply chains to optimize efficiency. The funding, which is very important here, the maximum amount of funding available for this project is 460,000. That's our cap, that's our that's the budget we have available, and the maximum to any one individual project is 150,000. We'll fund 100% of eligible costs, as long as you're meeting the criteria or your projects are going to contribute to what we're, we're talking about in our terms and conditions. If you're putting in a large project, you may, if you wish, you don't have to, but you may, if you wish, split it into two or more smaller projects to increase your opportunities of getting funding, but you can if you want, apply for the maximum limit of 150,000. Part funding may also be considered, and this is a competitive process. So everybody's project that comes in, we'll create an evaluation panel, the marking criteria are in the terms and conditions, and projects will be assessed, and they'll be offered, call or offers will be made to each successful project. And if somebody accepts it, great. And if they refuse it, we'll move on to the next eligible project. Projects must focus or should focus on developing innovative solutions. So really, we don't want to pay for something that's already happening or where there's other sources of funding. We want to create processing out of this or create new projects, see new allotments and so on. Confirmation of funding will be formally notified in writing. The department will only pay um, when their invoice is provided. And the last date for payment is December 2026 the 18th of November 26, so that we can issue payment in December 26. And remember that you must consider as part of your project how you're going to fund it, because like I say, no funding will be paid out until we have received um, invoices and we may request bank statements and so on, so on to show that the money has been moved out. So there are five main themes for proposals. Um, these are developing premium markets closer to home, so promote short, efficient routes to market to connect small food producers to the consumer. And also there are opportunities there, if you wish, to 
pay for advisory investment marketing support or even simple things like um, bringing groups of farmers together so that they have strength when they're going to a retailer or different farmers may wish to supply restaurants or whatever you can think of, anything you can think of that's going to add value for those that are producing the food. We want to encourage collaboration among stakeholders. So this means um, producers, distributors, retailers, and consumers. Again, what you're trying to do is get people to see where the food is produced and introduce as much efficiency as possible into the supply chain. We want to support food producers in diversification. So when you look at the figures from the National Farm Survey that Chagas produce every year, large percentages of farmers' incomes is coming from either direct payments from Brussels, EU subsidies, or other schemes that they take part in. So what we're trying to do is add value to what farmers and vegetable growers and horticulturalists are producing and doing. We want to encourage farmers' markets and support and work with local authorities to expand the number of farmers' markets, farm shops available in each locality. Where possible, the development of community gardens. So again, this will be done with local authorities and local communities. Just so that people know areas we're not going to, or it isn't envisaged that we'd cover um, areas that are grant aided already. So, or things that are up and running already. We're not going to pay for something that's already there. We want to enhance projects. The idea here is that it wouldn't have happened without this funding. So it's not seen that we'd support research costs or setting up cafes or food establishments or replace actions that are currently taking place without this funding. The application process, so the application form can be got if you email organicpolicy at agriculture.gov.ie. The terms and conditions and the application form are there. You can email that to us or post it to us. The application date, the closing date is going to be extended by a week. Um, so the closing date was the 11th of, of October. It's now going to be extended to the 18th of October. As part of the process of applying, you should prepare an evaluation plan. This just sets out KPIs for you and the project and what shows us what you're likely to achieve. You won't be marked on it, but when you are delivering your project and applying for uh, funds to be paid out, we'll be checking that you've delivered what you said you would deliver. And on the right hand side there, you can see the project assessment and selection process. So <laughs> is it relevant and does it align with the objectives of the open call? The potential impact. So we want to increase efficiency, sustainability and re resilience. The scientific and technological excellence. So, is it going to be? Um, is it going to help everybody else? Can it be replicated? And what's unique about it? I suppose the quality and feasibility of the plan, including the budget and timeline, and also previous history. So, if you have engaged with the department before, if you've drawn down funding aside from receiving, uh, say, direct payments or pillar two payments as a farmer, but if you've engaged with the department under other funding calls. Have you delivered on time? Have you delivered final reports and so on? And then of course, the potential that this can be replicated elsewhere within Ireland. And if you're an organic producer or this involves solely organics, an extra 10 marks are available. How it's going to work is that you'll be applying to the Department of Agriculture here in Johnstown Castle by email or by posting it there. Um, our address is on that, but it's the Organic Policy Unit, Johnstown Castle, Wexford by the 18th of October there'll be a, an evaluation panel within the Department of Agriculture. And depending on the number of applications, um, within a month, we hope that we'll be making letter of offers to successful applications, to successful applicants. And then when we receive confirmation, you'll get to go ahead to begin your project. Just that you are aware, like I've been saying from the start, if, um, if there are other areas of funding for you, you should be applying to those. For, so for example, there is a National Horticulture Grant that opens every year. It's not open at the moment, but it does support, say, the purchase of equipment for uh, horticulturalists, for horticultural production. For organic processors, the Organic Processing Investment Grant Scheme, it was announced in the budget the other day. For next year, we'll have a fund of three and a half million. And Minister Hackett will make an announcement about that opening in the next couple of weeks. So, just make sure that your project actually fits in here. Sometimes people apply because they think it's something that's open, we better apply, why not? But make sure it's relevant to you and check are the other are the other schemes maybe more appropriate. So in the case of OPIG, for example, financial assistance will be given to projects which improve the organic sector, 
and give an opportunity of enhancing income. Um, we do know in organics that we're going to double beef production in 2025 and treble sheep production in 2026. And we also know that we import about 70% of organic fruit and veg. So there are opportunities in those areas that Irish farmers and growers could be taking. If the project in OPIG is going to help improve production, handling and organic, of organic produce, or facilitate the adoption application of new technologies. If you want to know more information about OPIG, again, you can contact us here in Johnstown Castle at organicpolicy at agriculture.gov.ie, or it's all available on the Department of Agriculture website. So that's a brief presentation around the scheme, the terms and conditions, and what I'm going to do is ask my colleagues, Eileen, PJ, um, Peter, Alan, are there any questions there so far? And we'll answer those um, as many as we can today. Hi, Jack. Yeah, so um, Parag, I just reiterated that the total budget is 460,000. Um, and Una just asked, would you explain about how the money is paid out and when, as she didn't quite grasp it? So the max, you're right, the total fund for this is 460,000. The maximum project allocation is 150. You set out a timeline when you're applying to us about when you aim to draw down funds and what you're going to what what invoices you're going to show us at that time, and we'll work with you on that. But the latest date we can receive invoices is November 2026. Is that okay? Is that clear enough? Uh, just Una has said, with the funding available, can it be research for a national scheme? No, no, it's not envisaged. That's that's a different type of project, and no, it's not something that we'd see for this. Okay, so I'll move on then. So Molly just has, what financing options do you suggest for a group application where there is not a hundred and fifty thousand in cash flow? I suppose what we're saying here is this is what is available from the Department of Agriculture and what other community groups have done is gone to say places like Clown Credo that support community groups and provide funding there. But it's open to everybody, maybe they can work with their local authority for bridging finance. But I do know say for local voluntary groups like GA or soccer or um, Tidy Towns groups, Clown Credo offer, offer funding. Okay, Jack, I'm just going to move on to the next one then. They're coming in fast. Um, can this funding be used in conjunction with the Organic Capital Investment Scheme? Uh, I suppose it'll depend on what the project is. So the Organic Capital Investment Scheme is to support farmers to buy farm machinery or build sheds or improve the infrastructure of the farm. The OPIG one I discussed is about um, retailers, but if somebody wants to send a detailed question, my email address is jack.nolan at agriculture.gov.ie and I'll come back to them. You know, if they don't want to describe a project there at the moment in the question, but do it that way because I'm not sure how farm machinery and this would work together. Okay, um, so there's a question there. Margaret has asked, uh, are these pilot projects and how will success be measured? Uh, they can be pilot projects and how successful be measured will be coming from you. You'll be telling us what targets you're aiming to achieve. We'll be looking at how innovative it is. Can it be replicated elsewhere? Is it going to make a difference? Is it a project that wouldn't have happened without our support? And you can see the marking for it there. But the evaluation plan that I mentioned is part of this, part of the application, and people will show us what they're going to achieve. So other than that, it's, it's what I had on the screen there. If I just go back to it, uh, this is what it's going to be marked off. So if you go down through that and see what impact your project is going to have here, do you think it's going to achieve good marks? That, that's what will be success. Okay, so yeah, just to reiterate that the deadline has been extended. It's now the 18th of October. There was a question for that. Yeah. Uh, can you say a little more on what you mean by the efficiency of short food supply chains? I suppose it's the less cost between the producer and the consumer, how to reduce costs, whatever that is, whether that's transport. So for example, if you have 10 farms 
within a certain radius supplying into a restaurant or supplying a, um, a retailer, is there a way to combine the transport going in? But any idea you can come up with. So if you're thinking of something, if you're not certain that it's eligible, you're free to you're free or we're we're welcoming your questions in writing. Um, but it's any way that's going to reduce costs for the for the primary producer. Perfect. So I'm just moving down. Um, I think I can answer that one. Does the evaluation plan need to be submitted with the application? Yes, it does. Um, it won't form part of the marking for the assessment, but we do need to have it. Um, then the next one is, is there a template for the application or a list of items which should be included with the application? Uh, so there's an application form there on our website, and that's the template that you should use. Now, and I'm not sure about this one, is there a match funding percentage? This is 100% funding. So, but if you can draw down funding elsewhere and complement it with this or use some of your own funding, that's fine too. But it's 100%, so it's 100% grant aid. Okay, and in terms of expenses covered by the grant, can professional fees and costs associated with project management and development be covered in this? They can. Just again, remember this is a competitive process. So what we want to see are projects that are going to make a difference in communities and for primary producers. But definitely, yeah, they can be covered. Okay, and there's a, it's more of a comment really than a question, Jack. Is there an explanation as to why the overall budget is relatively low compared to funding of other schemes? It is concerning that potentially only three projects could be funded with the 150,000. Uh, no, I don't have an explanation. I'm sorry. This is the budget we were allocated. Um, so maybe, you know, in the future, there might be another call. I don't know. But this is what we have available to us at the moment. Um, we might get a large number of smaller projects. You know, just because the maximum is 150,000 doesn't go to say that only three projects will be funded. Maybe, you know, there'll be one to the maximum and other smaller ones. But no, unfortunately, I can't explain the budget allocation. It's what we have and it's the parameters within which we're going to work. Perfect. So the next question, Jack, is can you talk about how funding could be applied to community allotments? I suppose it's up to people to work with the local authority and see what kind of plan they can develop there to that's going to get either something off the ground or really cause a change on it. But that'd be up to the individuals concerned and the community groups concerned to come up with a plan. We don't have set formats about what we expect. We'd like to see innovative ideas that are going to help people uh, and make a change to those involved but I don't have a set, we don't have a set plan for what you should do or anything like that. Okay, so the next one then is, would a community production centre be within the remit? If that's a place where several producers are going to bring their product and it's going to be packaged or anything like that, yeah, well then definitely it would be. If that's okay, the idea, then maybe, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think it is. Um, Philippa, if that isn't, you might just put another message back up for me. Um, so then there's just a little comment there saying Community Finance Ireland work with communities. Um, now, will this be done in phases? If we apply now, will there be an opportunity to apply again next year for further funding to develop again? I don't know. We'll have a new government next year. Like we don't know when the elections are going to be held, but there'll be a new government next year. This was part of the programme for government commitments of the current government. And the amount of funding that was allocated, we've discussed, and that's what we have available for the next two years. Um, sorry, just to highlight again, Eileen, that's, what did you say about the community funding, where you could get it? Oh, um, somebody had just put up, here with me now, um, that Community Finance Ireland work with communities. Okay, and again, the department aren't advocating for any different finance provider, but just that you know that they're there, so that's a this second This is option just the well. comment that somebody has made. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then, thanks very much for suggesting it. Uh, we have Caroline. Um, yeah, I'll just reiterate that you have to submit the evaluation form with the application form. Uh, so somebody said, I have some great ideas, but they will involve current trading laws being changed. This is research, but how is that not allowed? Uh, it doesn't come in here. Maybe there will be other opportunities under the next government or current our current budget is 
quite small, as someone already pointed out, and it's not covering research. And changing trading law is not what's envisaged for the, the fund that's available here. Perfect. So um, does this grant include extending a farm shop and to build or put in a port cabin for classrooms to do courses like knots and other education towards improving the organic knowledge between farmers and people? So what we've described earlier on there was that this is aimed at diversification, at adding value. So in that case, you're talking about buildings that would have to have planning permission. You'll comply with all requirements, but yes, it would. Perfect. And is there a guide as to what would the as to what would the ideal requesting funding funding amount be? As with the available budget being under half a million, it would discount large funding applications. No, there isn't a guide. There isn't a guide. I mean, everything that's there is quite it's quite a small fund, as people are saying. But nevertheless, it's innovative, and there will be very good projects that come out of this. But we don't have a guide. But perhaps you could combine it with something, use this to start and draw in more funding from other uh, other sources, but we don't have a guide. And somebody else has commented about the uh, research, Jack. Just when you say that research will not be funded, does this include data gathering, where the data gathering is a component of the overall project? I suppose it'll depend on the amount of money, like the percentage of the overall allocation that's going to it. But the idea was that this would be um, these would be innovative projects or community projects, allotments and development and so on, rather than going for research. Okay, and would you consider funding an online market that is currently voluntarily run and not sustainable and with the funding could be expanded to include many more producers? Um, it's difficult to say for definite. I suppose the application form is less than four pages. It's relatively simple. If someone would like to apply and flesh out what you're saying there, it'll be considered. Um, hopefully, it wouldn't take you too long to make the application, but I can't give a definite answer to that at the minute. I mean, it's something that's up and running, but if it's not sustainable, it's difficult to see why we support it. Okay, and um, educating consumers on local projects, produce and sustainability, would this be applicable? I think you covered that in the other one, Jack, didn't you? I think so, yeah. I think like we do have calls for promotion and so on that um, maybe that'd be better under or there's forestry promotion funds and so on. But like I say, I, I'm sorry I can't give definitive answers, but until we actually see the project, it's quite hard. But it is, I know it's your time and everyone's time is valuable, but the application form itself, it's not, well, we don't think it's too onerous. You know, and it might let someone tease it out and submit it, um, but it's difficult to say for definite. Okay, so we have another question. Can professional fees and costs associated with project development be covered in this? So you've already said yes to that. So supermarkets have the consumer market almost completely controlled, so laws need to be changed to take control back. Um, okay, Una, I appreciate that, but that's not um, relevant to the funding at the minute. Uh, right, so can capital expenditure and ongoing costs like rent and electricity be included? We wouldn't include rent and electricity, no. That wouldn't be included. Capital expenditure would if you're purchasing something, but not, not ongoing costs like that or rates or anything else. Okay, can the funding be used to support farmers selling off farm grain to other farmers, or is it directed more towards food for human consumption? Uh, so farmer selling grain farm to farm is not what this is about. Like so, for example, if you wanted to buy a grain cleaner or dryer or something, that'll be covered under OCUS or the organic. Sorry, it'll be covered under both the organic capital investment scheme and also um, the organic processors investment grant, which will be open later on this year. But that's not what this is about. Okay. Uh, just just a quick query: Can a group of farmers apply together? Yeah, that'd be very positive. So, for example, in organics at the moment, there's a lot of leakage of beef and lamb. A lot of the producers are in the west of the country. Maybe there's an opportunity for a group to be set up and someone to run it for them that's going to um, work on where they're going to sell their products. So definitely groups coming together, it's very positive. And could it be used to cover fisheries short supply chains? Yeah, I don't see why not. 
Uh, can more than one proposal be submitted? Yeah, but the same proposal can't be submitted in each team. So yes, definitely more than one proposal can be submitted. Okay, so are you going to look more favourably on products that are not looking for 100% funding for their project? No, it's the quality of the project. It's the quality of the project, you know, but it's just that it helps. Like people have commented several times about the amount of funding that we have available and we fully acknowledge that. So if you can bring in more money from somewhere else, that's all to the good. Okay, Jack, there, maybe at the end, uh, we might give your email address again because there's a couple of people looking for that. Um, a combined space for primary producers and makers. Yeah, yeah, but again, remember, we're not going to support rent of a premises. So just be clear on what exactly you're doing. But if you can get people to come together and work together, that's very positive. Can one farmer be the lead and the other farmer be part of the application? Yes. Perfect. Is there any guideline on the length, i.e. the number of words or pages which should be in the application? Um, it's a four page application form. So no, we don't have a guide on it, but you don't, this is not asking people to write a thesis. If you can get across to your point, um, you know, there's no need for a lengthy application, but we do want to see exactly what you plan and it needs to be explained in detail so that you you can see in front of you there the project assessment and selection. So make sure that it comes across clearly how you're going to hit these marks. And just to say to that as well, there is in the application form, it's a short description of the proposal, so 50 words or less, but that's all contained in the application form. Okay, so market research is a crucial part of any project. Is this not funded at all? It wasn't envisaged, no. Okay, since the focus is innovation, would ideas be stronger if applicants with similar ideas were notified and offered to combine? That's a very good idea. Unfortunately, under GDPR, we don't have that freedom and we won't be doing that. But it is, I, I can see the benefits of it, um, but I don't know how to facilitate it. So, but it's a good idea, maybe through a local authority, for example, on the community gardens or farmer markets, any of them that are on here might might put out their own call to draw people into it, but unfortunately we don't have the capacity to do that. Okay, so um, somebody's just said that planning permission can be sent in at a later date if one was successful in this process. The only issue we see is that we have this funding until November 2026. So if we have someone that's applying for planning now, um, we'd need to be sure in order to be fair to everybody that this project is going to go ahead. So it'd have to be part of the plan to show either you've applied already or you're going to apply quite soon so that the funds will be used because it'd be very disappointing for others if we allocate money to a project and then that project doesn't take place. So will we intentionally spread the funding across the five themes or are the themes a guide? The teams are a guide, but the idea was that we'd select one project from each where possible, and then you're going on the strength of each project. Like Good. if you look at the number of teams we have, sorry. No, you're okay, Jack, keep going. If you look at the teams, we don't have enough money to select, say, for example, a project at 150,000 in each one. So what we'll do is select the best projects and then rate them from each team, rate them against each other. Okay, so would you fund the building of a community kitchen on the farm where we can teach children and community how to use farm vegetable produce? If somebody can plan out and show us how this is going to work and how it's going to benefit the community and pick the team that you're applying under and you have planning and so on, that's fair enough. What we don't want to see is um, someone describing a project to us and then it's not being used for that purpose. So as long as people are genuine, we're open to, you know, it's quite broad what we're open to here. Okay, so will initiatives that are excluded from getting funding elsewhere be prioritised? Example, you've just mentioned various organic supports. Many people can't access these. I suppose I mentioned the organic supports because I'm familiar with them. That's all. But there are other supports out there. It's like the question about the funding. 
there are probably people on the call that know a lot more than me about community funding. So uh, not necessarily, you know. Okay, and just another query, would you prefer to fund three big projects or 10 smaller ones? Prefer quality projects. The size of the project isn't really an issue for us. It's the quality and, you know, what's actually going to be delivered that's going to cause change and improve improve life for communities and primary producers. Okay, so the next question is, if I have already put in a proposal, can I amend it? You can but it'll have to be done before the closing date. Now, while the projects might be 100% funding, can the project charge additional fees to participants to cover areas such as rent? You can. You can. That's part of your business plan. As long as it's clear, like what we want is that we understand from the start when we're assessing your project exactly how it's going to operate. So once you account for that and it's clear and it's not something that's brought to our attention later on, that's fine. And do you have to use the public procurement process for the project? Uh, if so, if somebody is going out to tender for something, they have to. It has to be within, yeah, the public procurement process. Like it's, yeah. Um, the next question. Uh, I, I don't think we can. Can I give my permission to you to give my contact to others? I don't think so. No, no, we're not doing that. Applicants could indicate permission to have their details shared in advance with similar applicants. Again, sorry, we've just answered that one. Uh, can you match funding if necessary with your local development company? Yeah, that's fine. It's fine from our point of view. What we don't want to see, and we, we will ask you, like, that there's no issue of double funding. So someone isn't getting funding from say, the local development officer leader for the same project. So that two, you know, you're getting funding from two places for the same issue. If it's adding value, yes, definitely. Okay, so yeah, just to clarify again, the total funding is 460,000, but the maximum for any one project is 150,000. So does that mean that a minimum of five projects will be funded to have at least one per theme? So no, we'll pick the best project in each team and assess them against each other and work from there. But no, it doesn't mean that one project from each team will definitely be guaranteed to go through or to get funding. Do you envisage funding a minimum number of projects? It's important that we know this if, if it's worth putting our time into it. Yeah, and like I said earlier, we appreciate everybody's time, but no, we don't. We genuinely, we're going to assess the projects that come in and rate them and we'll work from there. And if the project involved employing somebody to set it up, could part of the funding be used for their wages? I suppose it's considered a professional fee. So yes, it could. Just remember it's a it's a um it's a competitive process. So everything must be cost effective. Okay, are you expecting local authorities to apply on their own initiative, example, to develop farmers markets, etc., or do applications need to be petitioned by food producers? It can be from local authorities on their own, or it can be from local authorities along with community groups. We're open to everything. Okay, um, this is just another query about somebody who's already sent their project in. I should have mentioned research in my project. Should I send in an amended one? Yes, up until the 18th is the deadline. Uh, if you are sending in an amended one, just clearly highlight maybe that it is an amended one, that you want to withdraw your previous one. What are the reporting requirement deadlines through the two years? Well, you'll set them out in your evaluation plan, but at least annually so we know what's going on um so that's it but as part of the process of application you set out an evaluation plan where you show us what exactly is going to be delivered and by when and then you can be submitting reports at that time to show us that it's being delivered but at least annually okay so will organic projects be weighed higher to get 10 extra marks 
you mentioned that you don't want to fund something that's already happening. However, if something has run previously and has no future funding guaranteed, presumably this is still valid. It is. If there's a business plan around it, I suppose you'd wonder why, if it was running and successfully, what happened. But as long as that can be explained and the future business plan is going to show that it's going to work, we're open to applications. Okay, and just leading in from that one then, is is it mandatory to have a business plan? Well, the evaluation plan, sorry, but a business plan definitely for something that's been there already, you know, you're saying we had this going, now it stopped, you know, so just so we can understand what happened, but it's an evaluation plan as part of it. A business plan isn't mandatory, no. Okay, so again, this is a similar theme. If a project has been piloted, but it is not funded going forward, is it eligible? It is if it's going to be something different, you know, that there's going to be expansion and it's going to do more or, you know, to explain what exactly has happened here. If it was a success, why hasn't it received other funding? But yes, definitely, we're open to it. Okay, my project is at the idea stage and requires research. It's not a specific business startup development concept. Is this webinar relevant to me? No, not really. Uh, does the department provide guidance throughout the project? Uh, that wasn't seen to be something we would be doing. You know, we'd be here if anything, but we're not here to, we're not experts in this area. So we don't have professional support for you. We can help you as regards terms and conditions and so on, but we don't have, we don't have that expertise available to us. Like someone could come in with, varying different questions that we just wouldn't have the answers for so i wouldn't build that in as part of your proposal okay um can you remind us how often you can draw down funds and if all the funds can be drawn down at once what is the maximum wait time between receipt submitted and funds received so the maximum wait time will depend on the time of year at certain times of year we're very busy here making payments and so on. It's normally within a month if everything is um, as it should be. And by that, I mean that all invoices are there, everything we've requested for payments, such as bank statements and so on, and any reporting requirements have been met. Um, we'd normally pay once a year. If somebody you know, wants it to happen more frequently, they should set that out in their proposal. How frequently do you need it? But we're not going to be issuing monthly payments or anything like that. But you know, if it was every six months or something like that, put that in as part of your plan, as part of your application. Okay, and there's a comment, could Board BIA help with food hygiene, best practice, et cetera, rules and regulations? I think they do. I don't know, do you mean, um, could they support you financially? But I can't speak for Board B, even though they're an agency of the Department of Agriculture, but they are, you know, they are helpful to people that approach them. So. Maybe that person could approach them first and see how they get on. Okay, do you have to contract all the work out or can some of the work be done by yourself? Some of the work can be done by yourself. You don't have to contract it out at all, but the idea was that something would actually happen here. So I don't know whether this refers to building work or what exactly is intended. So the next is, Will there be a portal for reporting or just email no. with Word or Excel documents? It'll be an email to us. We don't have a portal, so it'll be an email to us. And you'll be telling us when you apply what you're going to send back to us. You know, your evaluation plan will set out what you're going to achieve, when you're going to achieve it by. And at those dates, you'll be telling us, look, this is what we've done so far. And when will successful projects be notified? So the closing date is October the 18th, and we'd hope within a month to six weeks of that. It'll depend on the number of applications. If there are a very large number of applications, it'll take longer um, to screen them and evaluate them, and but we'd aim for a month to six weeks. That's perfect. Um, that's the end of the questions we have there now, Jack. So um, the only thing was someone's looking for your email again, if you would give it out. It's jack.nolan at agriculture.gov.ie or if anybody wants to ring, it's 086-834-0038. Is that okay? 
Yeah, that's it, Jack. There's no more okay. questions. Okay, well, I suppose I'd like to thank my department colleagues. First of all, Joe Byrne, who ran the webinar for us, Eileen, um, who's been dealing with all the questions there. Um, Peter Allen and PJ are in the background. And thanks to everybody who attended and the majority of you stayed. We really want to encourage applications. We do appreciate your time. We don't want you wasting your time. I can understand some of you are frustrated with the amount of funding that's been allocated. Nevertheless, it is innovative. We do believe good projects will come from this. We will help as much as possible, um, but we don't have expertise in all these areas. So when I say we'll help, I mean in um, if you want to know about funding, you know, drawing down funding and so on, and what kind of requirements we need. And I wish you all every success if you apply to us. Thank you very much.